All right, so a big reason that people get into software engineering is for the pay, but it can be hard to know what to expect. So in this video, I'm going to break down my first three software engineering salaries, what factors I think influence your pay, and what reasonable ranges I think are for the three levels, junior, mid, and senior. The reason I'm doing this isn't to flex, it's that I wanna do my part to combat this taboo we have in society about discussing money and salary, and I also wanna be helpful to you. I don't want you to get taken advantage of when you're negotiating your salary for your first software engineering job or your second software engineering job or any job. But it can be hard to navigate and it can be hard to know whether or not you have leverage unless you have some information first. So let's go ahead and get into it. Okay, so let's start with my starting salaries. I won't bury the lead. My starting salary at my very first job was for $62,000 a year. I left that job after about 10 months for my second job and my starting salary there was $74,000 a year. And then I left that job after about 15 months and my starting salary at my third job was $95,000 a year. Keep in mind that I didn't leave those positions at those salary rates. My salary increased while I was in those jobs, which is pretty common. And that's really it. There's not a whole lot else for me to say there aside from this is just one data point. The more data you gather, the more helpful it is. So just keep in mind that I'm one person, but you can kind of keep these numbers in mind for when you're navigating your own job search. And if you find this part interesting, then leave me a comment and let me know and I'll do a video on my full salary progression over my engineering career. All right, let's move on to our second topic, which is what influences your pay. So of course, there are a lot of things that influence your pay, like for example, your experience, what your specialization is, how good of a negotiator you are, but I'm not really interested in discussing those things today. What I wanna focus on are two things. Number one, your location in the world and number two, your market. The reason I wanna focus on these things is that I think those two things have a really big influence on what you can expect to be paid. So for example, up until the past couple years, if you lived in San Francisco or New York, then you could expect that your salaries would be way, way higher than someone working in Birmingham, Alabama, for example. Even if you're not in a huge city, the size of the market and how tech focused it is, is also pretty important. So for example, I live in the Triangle area of North Carolina, which is sometimes called the Silicon Valley of the East, there are tons of tech companies. And that's really helpful when you're looking for a job. If you're living in a place that doesn't have that many tech companies, then not only is it going to be harder to find a job, but it's also gonna be harder to get paid higher because when there's a market, there's inherently competition and that drives salaries up. So the reason I bring this up is just that where you live and the kind of market you're in heavily influences what you can expect to make. And so when I talk about numbers, that is always applicable to my local context. And a lot of my perspective is shaped by having been in this particular market in the triangle for the past five years. So basically take what I'm about to say with a grain of salt. One quick caveat before we move on, I think largely salaries are going up after the pandemic because of the prevalence of remote work. So maybe companies in San Francisco aren't paying people in San Francisco quite as much, but I think those companies are now able to pay a portion of those salaries to people that live across the country and the world. And so I think the net effect is that it ends up becoming cheaper for companies, but employees are making more. And this is just my sense. I don't have any data to back it up, but if you think about it and you're a tech company for Google or Facebook in the Bay Area and you can pay somebody that lives in a rural area in America, a portion of the salary that you would pay someone in the Bay Area, but it's still way higher for that person in the rural area, then that's a win for everyone. So I've heard anecdotally that this is happening. So that's something to keep in mind. I think largely salaries are coming up in general. Okay, so with all that said, what are reasonable ranges that I think you can expect to be paid as a junior, as a mid-level engineer, and as a senior engineer? Again, keep in mind, this isn't big tech. I don't have experience with big tech and those salaries are pretty common to find online on sites like levels.fyi. You can go look there. My experience is more in small to medium sized privately held companies. So I'm gonna be speaking mostly from that perspective, but I also know a fair bit about the salaries in my area, which sometimes include bigger publicly traded companies, but I'm not talking big tech. I'm not talking Facebook and Google. I'm talking just what I would call regular companies. So here we go. I basically break these down in 20 grand increments. So I think as a junior engineer, it would be reasonable to expect 60 to $80,000 a year base salary. I think that a mid-level engineer could expect 80 to 100 grand a year base salary. And I think a senior engineer could expect 100 to 120 plus per year base salary. Those ranges are based on my own experience 
experience and they largely align with my experience. But when you work at 10 companies, you end up making friends and meeting coworkers. And if people are open about sharing their salary, then you can kind of just take mental notes about what kind of salaries people are getting when they switch jobs and move to a new company. And so I've kind of done that. And I think based on what I know that these are reasonable ranges, of course, there are gonna be outliers, but if you're just getting into the industry, I would say largely shoot for these as benchmarks. Again, these are American salaries and pretty good markets. So keep that in mind. But now with remote work, I think it would be reasonable to expect something like this. So I hope this was helpful. And if you're still here, you'd probably like the rest of my channel where we talk about software engineering and self-employment. Regardless, thanks so much for watching to the end. Remember, stay hungry, stay curious, and I'll see you in the next one.